Wire Cat, sit in the rocking chair. Welcome. How you doing? Hang on. Sit down. Shut up. And let's do this. This is a express, super quick. Get yourself making music in sonar. Let's just start up where we took off yesterday, and we'll do some quick review. This is the interface. These are the appropriate showing parts of your mixer. You want to show your whole mixer, you can toggle with the D button. It'll bring up your mixer. Back and forth, D, back and forth, D, on, on, on. That D button will also control Melodyne when you need to correct your pitch on your vocals, things like that. Let's get started. By default, we have two tracks brought up here. An audio track, signified by this symbol, and MIDI tra track, signified by this symbol. As we know, audio tracks are recorded audio, just like a recorded snapshot of a picture. Once it's taken, there is very little you can do to edit or manipulate regarding uh, tempo or pitch. However, some things can be done, but it is limited, as opposed to MIDI, which is basically player piano notes that can be completely edited, completely manipulated. And in the genre and the realm we are working in, which is virtual instruments, we are going to be working solely with MIDI in part one, and then bouncing that MIDI information off into audio, which would be basically a step two uh, in the process. So let's get going with some fresh tracks. We're going to record these tracks. There's two ways to bring in tracks in Cakewalk. You can just right click, which is what I do, and bring in audio MIDI. Or you can come in here, add tracks, and go with this route. Whether you want to do MIDI, whatever you want to do. Uh, I just right click add the tracks myself. But we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go over to the right hand corner of the interface, which I'm going to bring up really quick right here and resize this for you all so you can see what's going on. This right hand corner of the interface you'll see basically your plugins, audio plugins, effects plugins, and uh, instruments, which is what we're going to work with today. Uh, if you just bought a VST and installed it and perhaps you had to ins install samples on your C drive you need to come up here after you install it make the drop down on plugins everything is very intuitive folks working with MIDI you go to the MIDI You're working with your clips go to clips tracks tracks options view options it's all very intuitive scan VST folders hit that it's going to scan all your VST folders and you will then see the VST you bought or the company name up in this menu selection. We are working currently with Tank, uh, excuse me, Sample Tank 3 to bring in a VST. You can either double click it or just drag and drop it into the pane. Click OK, and there you go. So sample tank is now set up. You have the corresponding mixer columns here. At the top of the mixer column, you have clip information. There's nothing there because there's no clips. You have track information, and you have pro channel information. Pro channel, we'll get into that. So let's just leave it on clip information to bring up your VST to see the interface we're going to go ahead and hit the key right here and there is the sample tank interface to color your track click on the border select any color you can just go through we will be purple today and let's begin working with sample tank currently our controller or keyboard should be on track one if it's not put it on track one and we'll go to channel one excuse me channel one on your keyboard with channel one up here on your multi-timbral instrument and we will go ahead and select 
an instrument. In this case, we'll select some bass. We have selected a fingered bass, and you will not hear anything because you have not armed the track to play. The track is now armed to play. And if we're on channel one, you can hear that there is obviously some bass playing. If you want to adjust the volume of that bass, you will need to do so through Sample Tank, as this is now controlling all your track volume. So if you wanted to turn the volume up in this case, I would suggest turning the master volume of Sample Tank up. And there's some nice bass. Let's keep moving here back to the play. And let's go ahead down to two. Go ahead and on your keyboard controller, move it to MIDI channel two. And we will pick another instrument. In this case, we will pick, let's see, some organ sounds good to me. A little tone wheel action. And let's go ahead and create a MIDI channel. And the bottom sample tank. So we have a organ here, and you can go ahead and title that track Organ, and our bass on one. Excuse me while I check and make sure that we're recording. Great. Let's go ahead and keep moving. And you can go ahead and move your controller to channel three. We're going to go ahead and insert, an, not an audio track, undo edit. We're going to insert a MIDI track. You can go on down here, sample tank. And we're going to insert, what are we going to insert? We got organ, little keys. Let's just put keys. So we have basically three instruments there. And what shall we use with keys? We'll pick a piano. Actually, let's use a electric piano. How about that? Nice little hearty EP. All right. So now we have on the top bass, an organ, and an electric piano. All we're missing is some drums. For those of you who have used the platinum versions and that of the previous sonar, you will be very familiar and have addictive drums we're going to use in this case. So go ahead and drag a direct of drums in there. And while addictive drums loads, we'll go ahead and take a sip of LaCroix Tangerine and finish coloring our tracks. And we'll go ahead and arm addictive drums and bring up the interface real quick. And let's just go ahead and color addictive drums. And we'll check out what addictive drums has to offer. What you want to do is come down here real quick. We'll pick a kit. Kind of like that clean sound. So let's go over to beats. Let's do some little bread and butter groove here, something simple. Oh, 
Oh, that's a ballad. Let's go to bread and butter. All right. And we're going to sync that to tempo. And you never want to start your project on one because you're going to need a count in. You need some time to get ready to start playing. So you want to start your project on two or later, depending on how much of a count in or what you might want to place before that. It is fun, however, to put a little fill right here to make that count in a little more interesting. However, we now have a small drum pattern. And what we're going to do is right click because we want this drum pattern to be able to pull out. And at this point, if we pull out, you're not going to see anything. So bring that clip back to normal. We're going to right click. We're going to come down to groove clip looping. Just simply click that and like a magic in no time at all, you have a nice little loop you can pull out over and over and over and over again until your heart is content. Let's keep moving here and we can start laying some tracks over this. So it looks like we've got about 12 bars here and let's go up to our bass and record a track of bass. Why not? So if you're on your keyboard, put your keyboard on channel one. We're going to arm the bass track. So. I think I'm going to slow that down a little bit. To just an even hundred and take a close listen to the beat. Don't just listen to the beat, but really take a listen to the beat, right, where the kick and the snare is. See if we can just lay a simple track here. All right. So uh, what you hear here is just basically what two measures, a couple bars, and we're gonna make this a bit smaller and make this a bit smaller and tame all these notes. If you can see what I'm doing here, this makes things wider, excuse me, basically taller, and this makes things longer. So when you're working with MIDI, you didn't see that. So you got taller and then longer and shorter. So when you work with MIDI, you want to give yourself some nice notes like this that you can see. And right here, it is what you call showing the velocity curves. And you can turn the show the velocity curves off. And we'll get to that. I'll sh it'll show us pretty quick here. Let's see. Note velocities. Yeah, we'll check that out. Anyways, these are all our notes. And I just added a note there. Undo. And what we're going to do is get rid of, we're going to take a look at this end note because this is basically the one of the new measure. So that's the beginning of six. So we don't want that note there. And meanwhile, that's what I want.
we're going to go through and just lock these up. So here's the first node. And you can see we want it to land right there on 2001. Second node, once again. Now this is your snap over here. Right now it's set to uh, 1 8th. It was on 1 4th. Turn snap off, turn snap on. Now a snap basically brings things into time or the nearest time automatically, like a ruler. So you can set your snap to like one inch, a centimeter, a whole a half inch. So in this, we're using musical time. So I like to keep mine set to a 16th note. And that makes most of American rock and roll and things like that editing. The time is just kind of right, right there for you. And there's some numbers you want to, to make things easy is the zero zero, which is the one, 240, 480, and 720. And that way you can just go through really quick, lock up all your notes. And I really like doing this more so than quantize, basically because it familiarizes me with what I'm doing musically because I'm going to go and I'm going to see every single one of these notes and I'm going to know where they are. And just in that, the secondly is I know where my notes are. I know exactly where everything is. And since I built it and know where it's at, then I'm all that more familiar with it. So let's check out this bass line. Right, and you can see it stops right at the six there. We're gonna go ahead and trim this. Just back right to the zero zero. Oops, and we can split that right there. And we'll just bring this bigger so we can see it and get rid of that. So nice clean beginning nice clean ending let's see if we can just groove loop this and it's not gonna work sometimes groove looping doesn't work like that and you get this little segment here I haven't mastered making groove loop every time but it doesn't really matter we can just copy a little more time consuming excuse me not cut but we can just copy and paste our baseline let it go another if you want to see where these clips are you can just look at your clip information this is 601000 and you can see the first clip if you just clip on it click on it and that is apparently sitting on 04 nine four seven however if you look at the note it is on two oh one oh oh also if you try to copy and paste more than one clip at a time and we know these are on the zero I'll show you we'll just take I don't want that envelope there we'll just take both these really quick copy and we can even smart paste and we want to paste them right on 10 and i'll show you the special paste so now we know on it's going to be put on 10 we'll go ahead and put that there when we go in and look at the actual numbers of where it landed there's 10 you can look at these notes where is this note at it's actually on 013 this note it's actually on 013 also. This note, ten, uh, 493. This should be on 480. This should be on 000. So you can see that whenever you copy and paste more than two clips for some reason, and I think this is a bug in Sonar, um, hopefully they'll be aware of and more people will understand, it's going to paste your clips a couple of cents off every 
fucking time. So you got to watch that. And that's another reason why it's a good idea to know where your notes are. Don't just depend on quantize to fix everything. Um, because you could really disappoint yourself. And I'm beginning to see that. Looks like the second clip. Is now off a bit even. So. Watch your numbers all the time. Let's try this again. Copy. And this time. I'll special paste that. You can see it's right there. And let's check our notes. Once again, 013. All our all our notes are, are off now. And that was just one. So I don't know what's up with this program exactly, but a quick way to fix that is to pick the select cool tool. Now the smart tool will not select. The smart tool does a lot, but it does not select. And it is not super, super good at moving stuff around. So we're gonna take the select cool and we're just gonna select all of these notes. And then we're going to take the move tool and we're just going to move it right to 601. And yes. So all those notes are now where they should be. And you can go ahead and kick back to Smart Tool. We can go check our notes and make sure that, yeah, this now sits on the zero. Perfect. So you can see there is some kind of bug or flaw, in, uh, ugh, flaw error in Sonar that is wreaking havoc with the copy and paste for some reason. If someone knows something about that, I'd love to hear. So let's move on to our organ tracks real to, real quick. This song is in G, or this little riff is in G. So let's go ahead and arm our track, and we're going to go ahead and move our keyboard to channel 2. And we're going to go ahead and arm this so we can hear our organ. <laughs> Now, if you want to turn your organ volume down, like I was saying, you need to bring up a sample tank and bring the draw bars down on sample tank. It's just slightly there. And let's see what we're working with here. What might work. Turn the volume down there just a little bit. And we'll just throw something over this real quick. And go ahead and count it in. Once again, our organ track is armed and uh, your controller is on channel two. Channel one, channel two is your base, channel two. And you can go ahead and uh, Hit record if you're ready to record. All right, so we got a nice little mellow organ track going there come back and listen to it really quick all right so as I go I like to also begin to mix and that way things don't get too fucked up so what I like to do is keep my drums up here on top because they always tend to be on top after that I kind of put my bass and other things, keys, and begin to line it up below it. So we're gonna put the drums on top. And currently you can see that the drums are kind of, 
kind of getting drowned out a little bit. We need to bring that organ down. So let's just. All right. So let's go back here and we can lay an EP track really quick and basically finish our song. As far as the MIDI content is concerned, so let's go ahead and do this. Make sure you put your controller keyboard on channel channel four. Excuse me, it's going to be on channel three now. Indeed, channel three is where your keys are at. So, what do you think will work with this? Assuming your controller is on channel three, tracks armed, and you have an idea of what you're gonna play, go ahead and hit R and begin your recording. So we have three tracks now. We'll go ahead and listen how this final track turned out. Some of those notes are landing a little late, a little early. You can see these are early. So we can go ahead and back these up, match them up on the one. Go ahead and put these on the 480, where we know they should be. Go ahead and back this up on the 480, where we know it should be. That way everything is nice and tight. Check it again. Once again, we see these notes are a little bit early. I'm gonna back them up. Get them nice where they should be so everything is nice and tight. Locked up to that kick, locked up to that, that snare. Get these at the 480. You see how easy this is. Once you have your, your snap on 16, everything is in place. Now, when you start recording, say I want to do two different recordings. So what I'm gonna do here in this case is I wanna redo this recording. This is very important, so listen carefully. What you're gonna find when you first boot up Cakewalk is something like this happens. Now, I just played one part. I want to come back in and go finish that riff. So let's just go back and let this play and come in where we need to come in. But wait a minute. I can't hear what I just played. And that is unfortunately the default state that sonar comes in until you go and change that in the recording preferences. So let's go to recording preferences and we're gonna go down to MIDI, playback and recording. Gonna go down a little further, project, MIDI project. And let's see, MIDI record. We're gonna come in and see how it says comping. MIDI project record. We're gonna to go to sound on sound. Make sure sound on sound is checked, apply. And then you're just gonna hit okay, close when that comes back up. And now when we go to record our second recording or second clip of the same track, you'll see that we can actually hear it. Thank you. 
So let's go back again. Make sure these are uh, adequately lined up. Just enough of the, just enough of this. Nice. We can fix these because they sound horrible, and it doesn't take any time to fix them. Lottie dotty. You can keep the length of those notes the same because there was nothing wrong with the, the length the way they were played. It's just the timing. And most of these timing issues is just simply because of latency. Especially in this case, running OBS and all these things. It just kind of makes my latency worse. So you can just go in and line these up real quick. And you can see when it's, when song 16 basically just pushes itself where it needs to be. Once again. You can see how easy that is. And once you know the numbers you're looking for, you just become confident. Because you know those you know those numbers are gonna work. And so you can just breeze through here. Any beats, any notes, you know exactly where it's gonna go. And there you go. So this is nice and locked up. We can go back and play it really quick. So it's been about 10 minutes of actual working time. Minus just an explanation. And here we have three tracks and we are already basically fleshing out the first verse of a new song. have a melody could be fleshed out there. You know I'm getting out of sentimental. Anyways, let's keep moving here. We have everything we need for a first verse. We can right click right here and marker V1 and or intro. So actually your V1 would be a, a little bit later on here in that second. So that would be an intro. V1 would start at six. Put a nice little fill right here by bringing up addictive drums. Let's just get rid of beats on addictive drums. We're only gonna look at fills here. I just want a really quick pop fill to bring in here. And that would probably work just fine. Sounds exotic, sounds funky. And let's just see how that sounds really quick. Keep moving. We now have a nice little fill bringing us in. Four, boom. And we can go in. You know, what do we want? Well, that snare, it sounds a little bit dry. So let's go in here. We're going to go to trans 
or excuse me, we're going to go to effects and we can just go to snare and just bring that up on the reverb. Now we have a nice little reverb going on there. We can change it to an ambient reverb if you want. Or if you don't want a nice slap back there, if you want some slap on it, just by moving it towards the delay as opposed to the reverb. A little reggae. So let's go back and check it out. There might be a little too much slap on that. Yeah. So let's cut down the slap and just some straight reverb. Even bring the reverb down. Just wetting it up a little bit. And we can start bouncing these tracks off. So Let's say we're happy with our drums. Our drums are sitting at zero. We can just come right up here to tracks. And we're just going to bounce tracks. Here we see tracks. And we're going to pick addictive drums. And we're going to bounce these off in stereo. You just hit OK. You can see it's working on the tracks right now. And if we pull this down, we can see the first track it has made. There's our drums. We can solo that track really quickly. This is mute. It's going to cut all the volume on the track. This is solo. I mean, it's only going to play this track. So we're going to solo this track. And this is only going to be drums. Nice. All right, so we can go ahead and label this track drums, and that is our first audio track. Let's keep it moving here, and we'll go to bass. Once again, to the top, tracks, bounce tracks, and a bass is a monophonic instrument, so basses and guitars are vocals generally recorded in mono as opposed to a stereo like a piano or an organ or drums so we're going to go ahead and bounce that bass off in mono it's going to go real quick because it's just what eight bars and we can go ahead and see how our bass sounds and it sounds okay Nothing mixed in there with it. And we can go ahead and see if these are locked up together. Sounds nice to me. But let's say maybe uh, that bass just needs a little bit of EQing. It's just a little, just to bring out a little bit of that fleshiness on that string. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into audio effects by right clicking in the effects bin. And we can just go in down here to insert audio effects. And there's a bunch of cakewalk effects already included. And this is part of them right here. You can see cakewalk. Here you have all the cakewalk effects. Sonatas, auto wah, surround, reverbs, phase, multibands. But we're just going to use a simple EQ just to try to just kind of enhance our bass, but put a small curve on it. A little more bass there. But a mid. And my cat has just joined us. Hello, welcome. 
So we're happy with that bass. Just added a little bit of EQ there. Might want to work with that a bit later. We have a little bit of a, as we did the reverb on our snare. Let's go ahead and keep bouncing here. And we're going to mute and mute. Any tracks that you've already bounced off, you want to go ahead and mute up here so you don't hear them double playing in your playback. So let's go ahead and take care of our organ and bounce that off. We could just go ahead and tracks, bounce tracks. And an organ is a stereo instrument, so we're going to do the organ in stereo. And I believe that is the track, although it's showing as bass. I do believe that would be the track. We're going to find out right now. And we'll know really quickly. I think that is the track. No, it's not the track. So let's go back and undo that. Undo mix down. And we're going to go bounce tracks. And I have, hmm, where's my organ here? Bounce tracks. Hmm. Let's try this one. I think those are going to be drums again. I'm a little bit. There we go. Now that just took the whole track. You can see this took all three tracks. So let's undo that bounds. What we're gonna What I'm gonna do is go into sample tank and we're just gonna simply mute. Constructs. And I'm not seeing an organ track. Isn't that just so funny? Or a keys track. And there's a second bass track. Well, 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 folks. We're going to have to do a, a little research as far as why I'm not getting individual tracks bounced off. That is really funny. Let's try it this way. I want to try a couple more things and bounce tracks. And once again, I just see the bass. Hmm. Sample tank. Just base. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you what we can do. <laughs> Is that bounced off nothing? Yeah, I have never had this problem, actually. And uh, I did a f I've did done several full songs with this. I've never had that 
not bounce off individually. I'm trying to think of uh, what I could be doing wrong here, but I've never had that happen. Let's let all of these up. And my keys just are not showing up. You see how my my keys and my organ just are not showing up. And I don't know if the seven. Very weird. Two tracks bounced off. You see how we're bouncing these tracks. We have a drum track, we have our bass track. And what I'm going to do just experimentally is I'm going to just mute the bass track. And I'm going to mute this bass track and this bass track. Very. Okay, so let's just try this bounce tracks once again. That's a real pisser, a real pisser. I'm not sure why it is only showing me these in the bounce section. Even if I highlight this, and we go to bounce tracks, it doesn't like that either. So what we can, <laughs> shit. What we can do is just freeze the track and see what happens there. And there's an organ track for us. So in this case, I just froze the track right here. And kind of made a mess of things. We can just take that frozen track. And move it down to its own audio track up here, down here. Just listen to it by itself here. Now, I never turned up the volume on Sample Tank before I bounced that, so it's very tiny. If we look at Sample Tank, the volume's still way down on that. Oh, and sample tank's frozen right now, so we can't do that. So we'll have to thaw sample tank out real fast. Now bring sample tank out, reloading all its sounds. That was really the long way around, the long way uh, freezing a track. It got the job done. It's pissing me off quite a bit that Sonar is not bouncing those individual tracks. But like I was going to show you here, the volume on the draw bar is still way down there. So we're going to just go ahead and process these. Apply effect. And gain structure there. And we'll just up it about 3 dB. Give ourselves some more volume. And we can just solo these three tracks. And we have three audio tracks. Hey. 
values. I think our, hear that clipping sound? That's the sound of two tracks going at once. So let's just back that up. And I have, I think I have two bass tracks. Oh, that's still going too, so we need to mute that. Alrighty. So now that we have these three tracks, we can go ahead and freeze the keys. <laughs> uh, and it has rendered a keys track here. And we can go ahead and bring this down and give it its own audio track. Go ahead and label this keys. So you can bounce tracks by going up here and bouncing the track. Or you can freeze the actual VST thought out later and just take that frozen track right there which is you know six to one half dozen to the other there's my new keyboard track and we'll just mute this What's going on here? Oops. I didn't have the other one muted, so let's back. Let's back this up and get rid of it. You can see I re bounced two different tracks there. So we're going to get rid of that. And we are going to freeze. There we go, that looks a little bit better there. Go ahead and pull this new track down. And we'll just solo this real quick. Alrighty, now we've got our complete song there. These are muted out. And this will become basically track one. So now you're listening to all audio tracks. There are no MIDI tracks playing whatsoever now. And just to prove that point really quick to see what's going on, we can just take all these tracks and just select them. And we can just delete them if we want. I'm not going to do that because we can still continue working. But basically, you could just delete this whole thing. We're just using audio tracks now. Thank you for hanging out, guys. Uh, come back. We'll continue. This is Cakewalk fucking speed session. We're going to go really fast, just breeze through everything we can and get us all making music with this wonderful free software. Take it easy, Wirecat, sit in the rocking chair.